The Destroyer is a warrior that epitomizes the concept of an unstoppable force. Using a hammer and the power of gravity itself, he charges into the battlefield and crushes enemies of absolute power. Full of immunities, massive hitboxes, and even bigger damage numbers, the Destroyer takes the role of a frontliner with great initiation. Walk your enemies down and swing at them. If you can carry such a heavy hammer, then you can no doubt carry heavy teammates. The Destroyer has a special build and release system for his skills. Concentration skills, the ones colored blue, will give you gravity cores on use. Some skills give more than others, with the cap being three cores. Gravity release skills, the ones colored purple, will consume gravity cores for additional damage on the skill and a shield buff. Keep in mind though, that a fair amount of gravity release skills have tripods that increase the damage at three cores. The difference between two and three cores is bigger than you might expect. Every time you use a gravity release skill, even on miss, you will gain gravity meter. The more cores you use, the more meter you gain. And when you max out, you gain access to hyper gravity mode. When activated, the destroyer gains all immunity and damage reduction, and it will lock out access to all skills except an enhanced basic attack and the identity skill, Vortex Gravity. The basic attack will inflict paralysis and deals good damage when chained, which will speed up the more you use without interruption. The AoE will also slow down both the movement and attack speed of targets near you. Vortex Gravity, the unique skill, is a one-time use that will pull enemies close to you and inflict paralysis. It exceeds the range of the slow field, so it's great to pull back those trying to escape. The awakening skill you'll be using the most in PvP is Terra Break. It deals heavy damage and has a fast startup that inflicts push, generating one gravity core and half your gravity meter on activation. Like all awakening skills, it has all immunity, but no damage reduction during it. This can make it highly punishable despite its all immunity to crowd control. The second awakening skill is Big Bang. You can move while casting, and both its range and damage increase the longer you hold. An instant release still hits hard, but has small range. It has damage reduction during its cast, but its slow movement makes it easy to outrun, so it is not used much in comparison to Terra Break. For stats, you want to run 750 Swiftness and 250 Specialization or Domination. The class has rather slow movement and skills of long animations and cooldowns. So Swiftness, granting attack speed, movement, and cooldown reduction makes it ideal for Destroyer, who has a melee of slow skills and long cooldowns. Specialization will increase the damage of your gravity release skills, which is the bulk of Destroyer damage. As it is an increase to the gravity core bonus only, it does not yield as much damage as Domination, even at 3 cores. However, Domination only applies to targets under push or hard CC. This can cause issues in combos. The stun hard CC state may expire before you land your burst, which means domination can have zero value. Even when perfectly chaining, some skills just take too long. Specialization is more consistent, but domination yields bigger numbers. Both are valid options. Destroyer is a class of a decent degree of build variety. With this guide, we'll be giving a recommended starter build as well as some flex skills that you may want to try out. Lost Star class for lots of different builds with skills and parts, so use this as a baseline to experiment with. The build link can be found in the description. Heavy Crush is a combo filler skill. It will inflict paralysis on a hit, generate one gravity core, and combos off most abilities, be it basic attack or stuns. However, it has no passive immunities and can be easily interrupted. As most destroyer skills generate two gravity cores, Heavy Crush is enough to take you to three cores for a big damage bonus. It has no animation lock and can be spaced out of at any time. Dreadnought is a very useful defensive skill to punish engages or apply quick knockdowns. It generates two gravity cores, is push immune, and every hit of the skill applies push. When run at level 10, a lingering AoE will remain that also applies push. This is useful to create space for yourself if you lack escapes and can punish unattentive enemies. It is animation locked until the final hit though, so try to only use it when space dodges down. Jumping Smash is your primary engage tool, having immense range both with its dash and its hitbox. It generates two gravity cores and jumps to the cursor location which means you can jump close or far depending on cursor placement. The skill has paralysis immunity, which can help win trades or escape when in danger. It will knock down enemies multiple times if using gravity inversion, which allows it to combo into itself. You can run an AoE increase pod to make it bigger, but then it can be rolled out of. You can also run on a different pod, which makes it instantly apply push at the cost of always jumping fixed distance. The best combo routes are only possible with an X11 setup, so while you may get more utility out of other pods, you do sacrifice combo potential. 
The skill is fully animation locked until back on the ground, regardless of pods. Power Shoulder is a fast startup Engage Hard CC, being a combo starter with great initiation potential. It generates true gravity cores and applies paralysis on the startup dash and the stun on the swing, making it a great catching tool or punishing tool. It has no immunities, however, so be mindful. And it is also animation locked until the dash ends. Running Crash is another hard CC with great engage potential, having pretty big range. It generates true gravity cores, and the longer you hold it for, the longer you travel. Considering it has paralysis immunity, it's ideal for getting in safe. It is animation locked until the stun, but it can be let go at any time, so that's no issue. Endure Pain is arguably Destroyer's strongest skill, providing a full push immunity buff for 8 seconds. It has a very big range and will generate 3 gravity cores on hit. It activates on frame 1, making it uninterruptible, and will also provide damage reduction during its duration, making one nearly immortal. Even the longest hard CC is only 3 seconds, so you have a minimum of 5 seconds of being utterly unstoppable. This is what Destroyer's entire game plan revolves around. Use it to engage in frontline without fear of punishment, create space, or just buy time for your team or your own defensive cooldowns to come back up. Perfect Swing is your core damage tool, an ability of a truly absurd hitbox and just as insane damage. Even though it moves you forwards, it has a circular hitbox that goes all around you. It's harder to miss the skill than it is to land it. The skill has three parts, a startup, a swing, and a wave. The startup and swing apply paralysis. The wave is just regular hit stun, but can still finish off or catch enemies. It is fully push immune, and since it is a gravity release skill, will provide a shield on use if using gravity cores. It combos off of every skill in the destroyer skill when close, even basic attacks. It is animation locked until the startup hit, after which you can space out. Keep in mind, its range also means you can hit multiple enemies, so try to aim it in a way that maximizes hitting multiple targets. Zeismic Hammer is your secondary damage tool one that provides a great deal of range and area control. It has pretty significant range on its second hit. The first hit will apply paralysis and the second will push, true comboing into each other. The skill is fully push immune, making it good to both trade and deny space. It is animation locked until landing, and even if you space, the second hit will always come out. There are also alternative skills that you can run. Instead of running Heavy Crush 4 and Dreadnought 10, you can always swap them around or run both at level 7. You can also replace Heavy Crush with Gravity Force for more ranged peel and catching ability. Earth Eater can also be used, replacing Dreadnought or Heavy Crush. Let's briefly go over these two additional abilities. Gravity Force is a solid skill that applies paralysis on first and last hit, while slowing enemies and generating two gravity cores. It will pretty much combo into any skill except Zeismic Hammer, which is too slow to combo without stuns. Although it is paralysis immune, its long animation and narrow hitbox makes it punishable. Thankfully, it is not animation locked, and can be spaced out early. Earth Eater may be a gravity release skill, but its damage isn't particularly high, and takes time to apply. It applies paralysis on the backwards hammer slam, but all follow-up hits are regular hit stun. It is primarily used for area control, while maintaining safety due to its push immunity, mobility, and shield from consuming gravity cores. Despite its push immunity, it is highly punishable by hard CC due to the spin not applying any higher level CC. It is animation locked until its hold finishes, but that it can be let go at any point, it is usually not an issue. The Stray Space Dodge has a unique property. It can animation cancel at any point by any other skill. This is incredibly useful to reposition, as well as lead up to other skills. This can allow for some pretty nasty combos, such as cancelling Zeismic Hammer's animation into Endure Pain, then Perfect Swing. Talking about combos, the Stray is somewhat freestyle with combo routes. Other than Zeismic Hammer, most skills will combo into each other. Any stun into a gravity release skill or into heavy crush before a gravity release skill will combo. Just try to always build 3 gravity cores, due to the damage difference between 2 and 3 cores on Perfect Swing and Zeismic Hammer. Perfect Swing's fast initial hit means that in melee range, especially after using space to gap close, it will chain off of any skill. There are a few important things to mention however. First, Running Crash and Power Shoulder have different stun durations. A combo of Power Shoulder will likely yield Domination Bonus, whereas one of Running Crash may not. Additionally, Zeismic Hammer is the only skill that will not combo off of Heavy Crush, even after Running Crash. But by using Power Shoulder, Zeismic Hammer can combo from Heavy Crush. Don't forget the stun duration difference. 
pretty much any combination of Running Crash or Power Shoulder into an optional Heavy Crush, then a Gravity Release skill. You can combo Jumping Smash into Perfect Swing as enemies fall. This will not work with Seismic Hammer though, and lands slanting very close. You can, however, use Running Crash or Power Shoulder to secure a combo even with Seismic Hammer. If using Running Crash though, don't use it too early, or it will expire before the enemy getup animation. And your pain will combo into Perfect Swing or Power Shoulder, which can lead into Seismic Hammer. But it will not work from too far a range, nor with Running Crash, as it is too slow. Gravity Force will combo into almost all abilities and has the benefit of throwing enemies close. But you will need to add a hard CC to combo it into Seismic Hammer. Earth Eater is not a good combo tool, as it will force scales which allows enemies to roll, even after Power Shoulder's long stun. But for the star combo, the destroys highest damage, you open with Jumping Smash into a hard CC, then Seismic Hammer, Space Animation Cancel into Endure Pain, and then Perfect Swing. Under 30 seconds, you can take classes from 100 to 0 without them even being able to roll out. Destroy's game plan is quite straightforward. Your job is to charge into enemy lines and disrupt their position with CC, then burst multiple targets. With Endure Pain, you're practically invincible, forcing enemies to avoid you. Use the threat of your presence to isolate targets and burst them down with your team. Due to your stuns being dashes, you can make use of this to continuously go in and maintain near endless pressure. When you think you're out, you can always use Endure Pain and continue the onslaught. You should aim to frontline, but there's no harm in playing back and peeling for your teammates. After all, all that does is put you next to the enemy, exactly where you want to be. Don't get too greedy though. Your cooldowns are long and you will need to retreat sometimes. Rely on your team so they can buy you time. You will struggle catching and chasing highly mobile enemies, but don't worry. Focus on peeling for your teammates and creating space on the map. With nowhere to go, enemies will throw themselves at you. Hold back on using your awakening skill until enemies roll. It's an easy recatch right after. And try to use your identity to shut down areas of the map, slowing enemies and making yourself immortal. Buy yourself time with it or use it to press a vacuum and zone control to shut down targets. That's about it for Destroyer and PvP. I hope this guide has been helpful at getting an idea of how the class works in the current PvP meta. Remember that this is a guide, experiment of different pods, stats, and playstyles to find what works best for you. One thing is certain though, Destroyer is a menace when in the right hands, an unstoppable frontliner of immense damage and disruptive potential. Sometimes, the only counterplay is to run away. And if you want to see some Grand Master level gameplay in Lost Ark PvP, then you can come check out my channel, twitch.tv forward slash lin underscore now. That's all from me, folks, and I'll catch you in the Coliseum.